the um, so you've probably seen all these bills in uh, Australia and Canada that force tech companies to pay news outlets for content. This is the American version of that. It would allow media companies to get together in a cartel to collectively negotiate with the tech companies on things like uh, ads, things like ads, and things like uh, paying them for content. And uh, so, which Republicans are on it? Well, if you Rand, get, if you Rand get, Paul, yes, Rand, Rand Paul's, Paul's on, on this. Lindsey Graham, Cynthia Lummis. What? Cynthia Lummis has also signed on to a really another really terrible bill. Rand, t- Rand t- Paul, you you come on this show and explain right. your position on this because I trust I like Rand Paul, so I want to hear what he's what why he's. I'll, I have the answers to why that so many Republicans are on this. It's because News Corp is one of the biggest pushers of this, and Republicans like News Corp. They just blindly they, trust it or something. Well, you know, paid. Rupert Murdoch and well, his media so companies have them on have them on Fox News. Look, I, I, they lean conservative. Give us give us the elevator pitch of what the bill does. It says to provide a safe harbor for publishers online of online content to collectively negotiate with dominant online platforms regarding the terms on which content may be distributed. It's a it's a temporary waiver on antitrust to basically allow these small publishers to collectively bargain against Facebook and Google. Small publishers. Where in the small, bill? Small, where where small, in the bill does it say small? It includes publisher. all. Pu- there's a non-discrimination provision. So you like includes, it? I like the bill. I think it's a good bill. So it allows to me. To me, my thing is Facebook and Google are the bigger enemy here, and they have absolutely destroyed local news. Like, I want decentralization yeah. of news. I want local newspapers to be able to report on stuff. And I think the way the model is currently, it benefits Facebook and Google. It's absolutely put but media the, out the, of this. The stuff. issue is, what? Wait, local, what? local news has been destroyed, but it's because. People want national stories. So it used to be that to get your news, you'd turn on, you know, Channel 5 for the 5 o'clock news. I remember we had Fox 32 in Chicago. Yeah, we, at Simpsons were at like 5.30 or something. And then... And then Central at, Time. Yeah, Central Time. And then and then at 6 p.m. was the news. And I'd go, ugh. And then afterwards, it was Seinfeld. And I was like, meh. I liked The Simpsons when I was a kid. And uh, that you, you'd watch your news. But your news would be like, who's, who's that guy in WGN? Is that Larry Potash? I don't remember. He's still there, I think. Uh, it was local stories. You'd get some national stuff, but they'd also be like a fire hydrant burst over on the corner of 63rd and, you know, California, and now there's water everywhere. The road has been blocked off, and you're like, oh. Now you turn on the news at CNN, and they're like, Trump is a Nazi. And you're like, okay, that's not anything relevant Mm -hmm. to me. Then you go on Google. You type in news, you get CNN. CNN's going to give you all national stories. CBS, all national stories. So you have to actively choose as someone in an area to find your local news, but I think most people don't do that. The other thing is, you know, local news, how this is being pitched to congressmen. I mean, anyone who's been in politics for a long time knows that the great soundbite is, we're on the side of the little guys against the big guys. That's how politicians have been selling almost anything for a very, very long time. Uh, There's nothing in the bill that limits this to local news. Uh, But there is a big part of the bill that uh, allows any cartel that forms to exclude whoever they want as long as they're not similarly situated to them. I don't think that's true. There's so, a, there's a uh, like, and, and hold on, bro. You got to have a billion viewers. The bill says you can't have fewer than one billion monthly active users in aggregate. I'd, we'd have to look at the language. Except, I think I think it's yeah. talking about social media. Yeah, it's got to be. Also, it's, I'm pretty right. sure that draft of the, the JCPA the, is not the most accurate, the, or the, the most recent yeah. one, because the, there's been a lot of work on it. I've, I've seen, uh, I've actually seen a draft of, uh, an unreleased draft of some amendments, and it's even worse. They're going to extend it by 10 years instead of the original four. That's how long it'll apply for. Plus, they're going to add something that they're going to separate into categories, one for broadcasters, which they define as stations. They don't define it as YouTubers. YouTubers hey. are, you're not going to get a handout because of this bill, Tim. No, no YouTuber is going to get a handout. No podcaster, no Substack author is going to get a handout. It's all for the legacy media. It's all for paper newspapers. It's all for traditional broadcasters. They're trying to rescue them from the Internet. And they should not be doing that. No, it's a, it's a bell. It's the same thing they're doing in Canada. It's the same thing they're doing in uh, in Australia. And, uh, you know, the way this works in D.C. is that the News Media Alliance, which is the big umbrella lobbying group for all the big media companies, uh, you should check out their website. Go to, go to newsmediaalliance.org, board of directors, and look at some of the people who are, who are part of this organization that basically wrote this bill. Uh, and you're not going to see a lot of local news in there. We need the term board of man. directors... We've got Antoinette Bush, Maribel Wadsworth, Pamela Browning. Who are these people? Look at their titles. Executive Vice President, Global Head of Government Affairs, News Corp, 
president of publisher USA Today. I, I just, all of them, I think this courier. This is very strange because, like, I, I just don't. So, so, what would you suggest? What so would you suggest I, as a I, better play to prevent Facebook and Google from getting all this ad revenue? From basically like incentivizing well, it, it, the it, nationalization it, it, of everything, it, free market. It, 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 no, it goes back to what we were saying uh, when we were talking about how evil is big tech. Uh, big tech was pressured into censoring by advertiser boycotts driven by the media. So big tech is bad, but they're bad because they are favoring the media. And Fox. this is and this is a bill that would force them to favor the media even more than they are currently uh, doing. What we want is for them to allow everyone to compete on an equal playing field, not to give massive handouts to the journalism. Why, why on earth would Republicans want there to be handouts to newspapers, even local newspapers, which are just as left, as, uh, left wing yeah, and we're, biased we're, we're as the right. uh, national I don't, we, we don't need a handout, and I don't want my competition to get free money from the government or for protections. If these news organizations can't figure out how to run their business for the modern era, they shouldn't exist. Look, I, th I think it's a complicated bill. Uh, I think there's a lot of arguments on both sides on it. But I will say this, which is if you're going to take on big tech, the biggest problem conservatives have is that these companies don't respect Republicans. They don't respect them as having posing any sort of threat whatsoever to them. And so if you're not going to embrace, which Alam, I know we disagree on antitrust too, but if you're not going to embrace any sort of actual solution that'll do something to these companies, they're not going to change their, you know, they're going to continue to censor. I got your solution. Well, that, you that free their software code. You can't break the company apart enough times. You got to make sure that the code is available. If you want democratization of the network, then everyone's got to have so, access so to the network. Are we, are we saying, are we, saying we have to sign on to every tech regulation no, but the we Democrats should, we should want? Offer, just to, we should just offer to, an idea. We have all these Republican members I'm, Establishment I'm, I'm objecting to. I'm not objecting to all of the bills, John. I'm objecting to this particular bill. I am a huge supporter of Bill Haggerty's proposed tech regulation. I'm a huge supporter of Texas's proposed tech regulation. Well, yeah, I like uh, we, some we of agree, the antitrust. We agree. We agree on section two. I like the jurisdiction bill. There are lots of bills. I like this one as a bailout. You, it's the it's the wor it's actually I'll, I I will make it clear. It is the worst bill of this Congress. Bailing out the media. The reason we uh, we have parents who think it's a good idea to chemically castrate their own children is because the media made that idea cool. The reason why we have uh, people supporting defunding the police is because the media made it into an issue. The reason why we have uh, libs of TikTok being doxxed is because of the media. The reason the entire country believed uh, Russia was in control of the government for a full two years is because of the media. The reason why well, yeah, yeah. Ma so, children were masked in schools. Because media. And for Republicans to support a bill that bails out the media, that's an obscene betrayal of their voters. I, I think that's a really that's a really good talking point. But I don't think if you would talk to Rand Paul, if you would talk to these guys, I don't think that that's I know exactly situation. what happened. The News Corp loyal, the News Corp lobbyists and the News Media Alliance went and went and spoke to them, um, and uh, it says they like those guys. What's Would, that? It says any print, broadcast, or digital news organization that has a dedicated professional editorial staff that creates and distributes original news and related content concerning local, national, or international matters of public interest on at least a weekly basis, and is marketed through subscriptions, advertising, or sponsorship. Provides original news and related content with the editorial content consisting of consisting of not less than twenty five percent current news and related content. Blah 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 blah. And to my so to my knowledge, there's a, the, a more recent draft that actually even excludes some of the larger. And uh, there's well, the new the new one says fifteen hundred employees, but that's uh, that's a trick because you can always corporate restructure your organization to make it into little, lots of little small uh, small fifteen hundred employee chunks. Um, what you, the thing you the, the thing you read out there, Tim, dedicated professional editorial stuff that leaves out every uh, one man independent journalist, every one man operation on Substack. It leaves out Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald will not be covered by that. Luke Rutkowski, we are change. Leaves out yeah. Luke Rutkowski. Glenn Greenwald went before Congress and opposed this bill for the. Uh, oh wow. For, uh, and you should actually watch his testimony before the House committee. It says the bill creates a four-year safe harbor from antitrust laws for print, broadcast, or digital news companies to collectively negotiate with online content distributors, requiring the terms on which the news company's content may dis be distributed by online con content distributors. I completely oppose that in every way. You're telling me that you think the New York Times, the Washington Post, CBS, ABC, NBC should be able to come together violating antitrust provisions 
to negotiate collectively amongst all of the biggest and most I, powerful media in the world. I, I don't think that's what it does. That's literally what I just read. Well, so th- I, as I said, that's that, that's an older text. I know that they've excluded some of the larger ones. I, my concern is local news. I want to make sure that we're not having everything nationalized. It, same thing that you just mentioned. I, I mean, um, it's like 117th me, Congress, 2022. No, I know. No, I know. There's, there's, okay, there's, okay, it hasn't okay, been okay. marked up. There's a, there's a markup coming. But there, this, the, this, the this local big, news talking point is pure marketing. They know everyone dislikes the big national media corporations. That's why they're talking about local news. They were know, marketing, well, this, this, they were marketing the this draft as for, who, as for local news Who's going to be able to well. deal with uh, Google and Facebook screwing them over more? Local news or the big guys? I, the would, big guys rather, are, I would rather how about, Google and how Facebook about, destroy the media machine through technological advancement, and then people like us figure out how to pick up the pieces and build outside of that ecosystem and create something new through merit. So one of the things we did was uh, over a year ago, we launched TimCast.com. We are funded primarily now through memberships. We are, we, are, we are removing our reliance on big tech platforms, and we have been reducing our reliance on big tech platforms. The next thing we're going to be doing is doing mobile apps and t- smart TV apps. We are finding a way to navigate this. We've got infrastructure being built right now to make us more sensor resilient. And I do not want to see CNN team up with the Washington Post and the New York Times to give themselves more power by leveraging the weight of their massive conglomeration against Facebook and Google, leaving all of us holding an empty bag. Mm. And, you know, I was covering this from the beginning, this favoring of the media. It's it's the uh, culmination of that trend. So Facebook already pays billions to news companies in licensing. Google has poured hundreds of millions, if not billions, into propping up the media already. And they're doing that because they've been told for five years by by the media if you don't favor us, we're going to whip up advertiser boycotts. And this is a part of that. It's trying to enshrine that same trend in law. The worst trend of Silicon Valley, promoting the media and making what was previously an even playing field uneven. By the way, I also want to bring up one, one uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous little statistic I found recently. According to Gallup, as of 2021... 11% of Republicans have a great deal or a fair amount of trust in the media. 11%. Um, and according to Pew, the number of Republicans who think abortion should be legal in all or most cases is 35%. So the media are less popular with Republicans than abortion. Wow. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.